Hi everyone, I'm Maddie, and today in Kids Zone, we're going to be learning more about Jesus and how he is an amazing king. Do you remember what we learned about last week? We saw that Jesus rescued Peter while he was walking on the water in a storm. When Peter trusted Jesus, he was able to walk on the water too. Jesus is able to do anything, and the disciples saw that Jesus was the Son of God. Before we look at today's story, let's pray and ask for God's help. Dear Father God, please help us to listen and understand what you want to show us from the Bible today. Help us to learn more about Jesus and to follow him and love him more. Amen. To start with, we're going to play a game. I'm going to show you some pictures that have been zoomed in on really close. I want you to try and work out what you think the picture is. Here's the first picture. What do you think it is? That's right, it's a clock. Here's the next one. What do you think? Well done, it's an apple. How about this one? What do you think it is? It's some pencils. Here's another one. What's this a picture of? It's some glasses. How about this last one? What do you think it is? That's right, it's some books. Well done, did you get all of them right? In that game, you could only see a small part of the picture and you had to work out what the big picture was. In today's true story from the Bible, we're going to learn about someone who saw something but didn't see it clearly. He couldn't see the full picture. Today's story is from Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 28. One day, as Jesus was walking with his disciples, he asked them a question. What are people saying about me? Who do they think I am? The disciples eagerly repeated some of the things they had heard from the crowd. Some of them think that you are John the Baptist, alive from the dead, one of them said. Some think you are Elijah, come back to earth to be God's messenger, another added. They certainly believe you are a prophet. Then Jesus gave his friends a searching look. Who do you think I am? he asked. There was a split second of silence. Then Peter burst out. We believe that you are the Messiah, God's promised chosen King, the Son of God. Jesus' face lit up. He was glad that his disciples had at last discovered who he was, but he knew that it was really God who had opened their eyes to the truth. Don't tell anyone else who I am, he warned them. He knew that once people realized who he was, they would want to make him into the kind of messiah they were looking for. A king to fight the Romans and give them all they wanted. That was not the kind of king he was. The disciples were glad and excited when they discovered that Jesus their master was God's chosen messiah. But like the crowds, they had dreams of a messiah who would be a great Jewish rescuer, who would bring in freedom for them. Once he was crowned, they felt sure they would be chosen as important rulers in his kingdom. Jesus knew the way that they were thinking. It was time for him to try to explain to them what kind of Messiah he was really going to be. Listen carefully, he said. There are hard times ahead for me. All the religious leaders will turn against me. They will plot and scheme until they get me arrested. In the end, they will sentence me to death and I shall be killed, but I shall rise to life again three days later. Peter was angry. He could hardly wait for Jesus to finish speaking. Don't talk like that, Master, he blurted out. That will never happen to you. Be quiet, Peter, Jesus said sternly. You are giving me Satan's advice. I have come to earth to follow the plan that God my Father has prepared for me. I shall go his way. Then Jesus beckoned to the people who were standing a little way off. When they had all gathered round, he said, If you really decide to follow me, be ready for a tough time. Being a follower of mine means doing as I do. 
It will mean saying no to the things you want and choosing the hard way. The person who clings to all the things he has ends up losing everything. The person who is ready to give up everything he has for my sake seems to be throwing his life away, but he is the one who will keep the most. He will win true life, the life that lasts forever. That life is worth more than anything else in the whole wide world. Peter realises that Jesus is God's special chosen king. He was the one who was promised in the Old Testament and who would come and rescue God's people. But Peter didn't really understand what that meant. He thought God's special king would be like a powerful superhero who would defeat all their enemies. What would you expect a superhero or a king to be like? What powers and abilities do you think they would have? Maybe they would fight battles, or have super strength, or sit on a big throne in a palace. But Jesus tells Peter that that wasn't how he was going to rescue them. Jesus was going to suffer and be killed, and then on the third day be raised to life. This is the only way that Jesus could rescue us. He had to die to take the punishment we deserve for the things that we do wrong. If we follow Jesus, we will also face suffering. Maybe we'll be teased by our friends for being a Christian. But because Jesus has been through all this suffering, he knows what it's like and he can comfort us when we face hard times and help us through them. We have an amazing King in Jesus who really is the Son of God and he has rescued us by dying for us. If we follow him, we might have to give up things now, but it will be worth it because it means we will get to live with him forever in heaven. Let's finish by praying. Dear Father God, thank you that Jesus is your special chosen king and that you sent him to rescue us. Thank you that he was willing to suffer and die to save us. Please help us to follow you and be willing to give up everything so that we can have true life with you. Please help us when we face suffering to trust you and to keep following you. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a good week and I'll see you soon. Bye.